Hey YouTube, it's Robert and I'm back with another video and in this video we are going to be discussing carpet. This is a video that's inspired a little bit by a couple of questions that have been asked of me in the comment sections of other videos, as well as a question that comes up all the time when I'm working with clients on selecting floor surfaces for their home. Uh, and that really stems around what the impact of carpet is on the indoor air quality of a house. And more specifically even than that, what does carpet affect in terms of asthma and allergies in general. So I don't want to make this a terribly long video, but I do want to give you guys some of the basic information to equip you for the things that you might want to be asking when you are going into stores and shopping around. I'll show you a couple things specifically to look for when you're looking at carpets at stores, and then I'll make my own personal recommendations in terms of a couple products that I think are great considerations for anybody that's really concerned about things like allergies, asthma, and the overall level of uh, VOC emission from carpet products. So let's start with the discussion of VOCs, or volatile organic compounds. And the issue and concern with off-gassing is something that comes up with a variety of products that we use inside the home, but I would definitely say comes up quite often when it comes to carpet. And one of the things with VOCs in you know any number of products is differentiating between the fact that something has VOCs that it, that it emits uh, versus has something to a degree that's enough to be a health concern for you. And when it comes to carpet, we know that it's installed all across the country, not just in homes, but in stores, in airports, in places that we frequent as a part of our day-to-day -day life all the time. So is it something that is really enough to create health issues for us in a home environment. I would say that we've safely come to the conclusion that carpet is not a product that exposes us to enough of any kind of harmful VOCs for it to be deemed a health concern. And I'm gonna show you something that you can look for on your carpet samples as you're out shopping to hopefully give you a little bit more peace of mind on that subject. All right, so when we go out and we are shopping for carpets, one of the things that we will find on most labels is this little symbol here. It looks like a little green uh, house kind of on the outline with a little roll of carpet being rolled out inside of it. CRI and then the words Green Label Plus. Now the CRI stands for the Carpet and Rug Institute, and they actually do the independent testing on indoor air quality for all of the different products. So the Green Label Plus is a extremely stringent set of standards for how uh, much off-gassing and VOCs can be present in these carpets. You can find out more about that uh, if you would like to do some more research by visiting the Carpet and Rug Institute's website. Uh, and that's just, you know, something to look for and maybe generate some conversation when you are out uh, shopping for carpets. Now, another thing, this particular product here is um, made from renewable plant-based materials. And so it is uh, OEKO Tex certified free from harmful substances. So with a lot of these newer synthetic fibers, the way that they're being made now is significantly cutting down on any type of off-gassing or VOC content in products, even as they would be compared to a mere five to 10 years ago. So as you can see, there is actually a certification and testing method that the carpets have to go through to achieve that label and basically stamp of approval that the carpets have such a low level of VOC emission that it's not deemed unsafe to be installed in your home. That also goes with the cushions that we use underneath the carpet. So when you're selecting the different grade of cushions, that's another conversation to ask your provider in terms of what benefits the different cushions offer for uh, indoor air quality. For instance, I have several different cushions that are actually treated uh, with an antimicrobial treatment and have a moisture barrier applied to them to help fight any of the mold or mildew buildup um, that comes with excessive moisture exposure. Uh, so getting away a little bit from VOCs into some of the other elements that affect the indoor air quality, cushion does play a role as well. So don't overlook that when you're selecting your carpet. So we covered the carpet, we covered the pad, but there's a third item that comes up all the time in, in residential carpet, uh, and that is the adhesive that we use to secure the pad to the subfloor. 
So when we're installing residential carpet, traditionally, we are doing it with a stretched in method where we put the pad down, we have tack strip along the perimeter, and then we stretch the carpet out to remove the tension that's in it and hold it in place with the tack strip. That's kind of a crude way of explaining it, but that's the basics. Well, the cushion has to be held in place by something other than just gravity. So we use an adhesive to secure it to the subfloor. And those adhesives oftentimes have a very strong odor and they do have VOC content in them. Now those dissipate relatively quickly, usually you know, 24, 48 hours, especially because we are covering it up with the rest of the products. But if you have really strong concerns about it, it's something to discuss with the installer to see if there's any specific adhesives that they use that are gonna be better for that than others, or if there's alternative methods of securing that pad down. I know in the past, we've had a couple jobs where we were unable to use that adhesive altogether and had to explore other options like different tapes. Uh, I would say in general, you're probably gonna have to pay more to have an installer use some other specific method of securing it. And generally it's not again deemed anything that would be an absolute necessity but if it's a concern for you then i would say absolutely ask and explore your options on that all right so now that we touched a little bit on the vocs and off-gassing properties of carpet let's talk about something that comes up even more frequently and that's the overall impact that carpet has on the indoor air quality of the home and its impact on people with asthma or allergy issues and whether or not carpet actually makes those issues worse. Now, I would say that it's generally kind of a misnomer that carpet is a really bad product for people with allergies. And I understand if we think about it, why it would seem that carpet creates more allergy issues for people, especially when you've got pets and, and um, you know kids tracking stuff into the house. Uh, carpet has more potential for things to get lodged down in there than when we have other products. And generally, when you have tile, wood, laminate, they're a little bit easier to clean than what carpet is because everything's right there on the surface. But the reality of it is, carpet is actually the largest air filter in your entire house. It is because carpet inhibits those things and, and those things actually get stuck to it that they're less able to get airborne. Now this is even more true with a couple particular products that I'm gonna talk about here in a minute, but my overall point is when we have dust that settles on the tops of our furniture or on our hard surface, it takes relatively little to kick that stuff back up into the air and have it airborne again. Where with carpet, when those things settle onto it, they tend to stick a little bit more and kind of settle in. So the reality is it gets more of it out of the air. Now, the flip side of that is we still need to clean it just like any of our other products. So when we do go to clean the carpet, it is a little bit harder to get all of it out, um, but that's where proper selection of the right vacuum cleaners uh, come into play, which I'll list some links to some vacuum cleaner uh, recommendations that I have for you. Uh, the good news is most vacuum cleaners that are recommended by the Carpet and Rug Institute I mentioned earlier are relatively inexpensive vacuums on the overall range of vacuum prices. So yes, carpet does trap more of those allergens and pollens in, but I would say that that's actually a good thing as long as it's being vacuumed out. So there has been a lot of extensive testing in very controlled environments to determine the true impact of carpet on things like asthma and allergies, because otherwise it's basically all left to our own anecdotal experiences to determine if carpet is to blame for our allergies or not. And that would be like me, you know, saying, well, my last house had way more carpet than my current house. And I feel like my allergies were way worse there. So it must've been because of the carpet when the reality is there could have been a variety of factors that impacted the differences of my own personal experiences. And I really don't have an accurate way of assessing what the true problem was. Uh, there could be a variety of factors. So that's why you know they have these independent tests to really truly determine what are the variables, what are the constants, and somehow come to a determination of what's to blame. So what would be my recommendations for you? Well, if you've been paying any attention the last few minutes of this video to what's behind me, you've probably already guessed it. But the first direction I might point you in is this product called Aero by Mohawk Industries. And it's actually considered a 
separate category under the carpet umbrella called unified soft flooring. It's the first of its kind and it basically eliminates the need for a pad separate from the carpet because it combines the two. Now this product becomes a hypoallergenic product because it doesn't absorb moisture so it really uh, doesn't allow for the growth of you know any type of allergens and uh, mildew bacterias um, it has a much better ability to breathe so it's virtually a waterproof product for that reason as well and then there's no latex basically no odors associated with it when it goes in and there's no VOCs in the product so as far as an overall indoor air quality conscious product this is just about the best option that I could point you to. Um, it's still somewhat limited in terms of the styles that are offered in it because it is a very niche product. But if that's your primary concern is the allergies and the indoor air quality, then this is certainly something to consider. Now one of the other things, because this product is unified and we don't have that pad to worry about, and there's also no latex in it, so there's really no tension to the product, there's two things that we no longer need. We no longer need the pad and the pad glue that goes down with it, and we don't need the tack strip anymore. This product is basically loose laid in your home, and then when we need seams put in, we connect it with a very specialized tape for this product. So the product just lays flat, you got a big roll of it, and gravity basically holds it in place, and there's no need for that tack strip because the product has no tension. Once it's laid down, it's relaxed, and it's ready to stay in place which also means if you ever did have any type of major flood issue, it could be rolled back and the potential for it to be dried out after the water was removed is greater. Now, again, that doesn't address things like sewage water or exposure that might need to replace this for other reasons, but my point is it could be exposed to a dramatic amount of water without it actually destroying the carpet or causing delamination in the backing like a traditional product would have. A couple other benefits of this product, because it does have a greater degree of airflow in the way that it's made, vacuuming is actually easier on this product because that airflow helps to release things a little bit easier than our traditional carpets. Another kind of separate benefit to this, but since we're talking about it, I'll go over it, uh, is the fact that this product, again, it doesn't have tension to it. So there's not gonna be uh, any potential for it to start to do what we call buckling or we get those wrinkles in carpet where a lot of your stretched in products lose that stretch. They, the tension brings them back and we get these wrinkles in there. This product doesn't have that, so that's not something that you'd ever need to worry about. All right, so as I mentioned, the Arrow is still a relatively new line and it's quite limited in the number of styles that it offers. And we're not gonna find carpets like Berber looped piles or patterned carpets in that line. So for those of you that, you know, take a look at the Arrow collection and it just doesn't really have anything that you love, uh, I wanted to give you at least one other direction that you could consider. Again, I think that for the overwhelming majority of people, any of the residential carpets on the market are safe for you to have. Again, I'll reiterate, with proper cleaning and maintenance, but for those of you that want something that's a little bit extra conscious in terms of the indoor air quality and allergens, I might consider wool carpet. The wool has a lot of natural properties that make it even more conducive to a better indoor air quality than our synthetic fibers. Um, it's naturally hydrophobic, so it does fight uh, against you know bacteria growth. Um, it's very good at inhibiting allergens and actually removing air pollutants from the air. Uh, so definitely something to consider. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on wool today because I wanted to save that for another video where I go into wool a little bit more broadly and that was based on a request that somebody had in the comment of another video. Uh, but wool offers a lot of beautiful styles. It is a very durable product and I would you know in general say that I like wool a lot uh, for a variety of reasons that I'll touch on in another video. So if you're not finding something in aero and you're kind of looking for something a little bit more friendly to the indoor air quality than what the other carpets are, wool would be one other category that I could send you on to continue doing some research into that category and ask about when you go out shopping for carpet. So that's all I've got for you guys in this video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button for me. It's easy to do and it's a big help for my channel. I really appreciate the support you guys have given me so far and I look forward to trying to help with all your remodeling needs 
going forward. Uh, you can ask me any questions that you might have regarding what I talked about in this video or in general on carpet. Just post them down in the comments below. I'm happy to try and answer as many of those as I can. If you'd like to see more content from me in the future, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on. And again, my name is Robert. I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs. So until next time, happy remodeling and have a great day.